Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of March 2020 and the time has just gone 10.08 GMT. And it's been a brutal trading session uh, so far. Uh, some of these moves um, haven't been seen for years, even decades in some cases. It's been a phenomenal, um, phenomenal trading session so far. Um, there's so much going on, it's, uh, it's almost difficult to um, cover every topic, so I'll just narrow it down to the main topics. There's been a colossal uh, sell-off in the oil market. Um, the oil market is down in excess of 18%. It's off the lows of the session. Uh, we have been down, you know, far, we have seen far steeper losses uh, than, than, than this. Uh, essentially, uh, where this, this, this comes from was, at the back end of last week, OPEC, we're talking about cutting production by 1.5 million barrels per day. Uh, the Russians weren't too keen on that. There's a, there's a group uh, of oil producers, if you take OPEC and its, a, it's, its colleagues, or it's a it's wider alliance, including the likes of Russia, that becomes OPEC+. Plus. Uh, there was talk that the overall group could look to cut production. Russia walked away from the meeting without agreeing any production cuts. There seems to have been a kind of massive breakdown in this coordinated um, alliance between all the major oil producers. Some are in OPEC, some just kind of work closely with the organization. Um, and that has kind of caused a major rift between, the, between Saudi Arabia and OPEC. Over the weekend, Saudi Arabia started aggressively cutting the price of oil, of its, of, of its energy contracts. It sells out to Europe and Asia and so on and so forth. There's even talk that, the Saudi, that, that Saudi Arabia are looking to actually increase output. Uh, and with that, we saw a colossal fall in oil trading when they got trading uh, late last night. Um, the, the, settle, the session in Asia overnight has been brutal. Today, here in, um, you know, at 1010 GMT, the oil market, WTI and Brent crude, respectively, are down in around the region of 89%, which is a massive move. The moves we've seen in the oil market have been the, the largest move, daily moves, uh, since uh, 1991 with the, with the Gulf War. That'll give, that'll give you an indication of just how bad things are. Turning our attention to equities, uh, because of the kind of massive uncertainty and the, kind of, and the fear of that we're going to head into kind of an, an oil price war, we've seen a colossal move to the downside uh, in equity markets. Essentially, every sector has been, has been hit and has been hit hard. Um, as you can imagine, the oil and gas sector and oil field services companies, they've all been quite, hit quite hard. Some of the moves you've seen on European equity indices uh, have been kind of the largest since 2008 during the financial crisis. So I'll give you an indication of just how bad things are in terms of uh, the, the negative sentiment out there. I'll quickly run through the ma major events of the week ahead and then I'll focus on, your, uh, focus on, the, on, the, uh, on the charts. Just because even though it is worth your while keeping an eye on corporate and economic news this week, I think the macro theme of coronavirus and that's associated health potential economic ramifications and the possibility of the kind of oil price war that we seem to be in, uh, I think that's going to dominate the headlines for the next few days. So in relation to the major events of the week, the weekend article can be found at our insight on our, on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under news and analysis, uh, you'll find it here. Um, so tomorrow morning, we're going to have French industrial production figures out. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have Dick's Sporting Goods fourth quarter numbers out. Uh, tomorrow, we will have first full year, full year figures from Standard Life Aberdeen. Uh, on Wednesday, we will have the, uh, the UK budget. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll also have uh, full year figures from Balfour Beatty. On Thursday, we have an interest rate decision from the European Central Bank. Keep in mind, traders are, are strongly, are heavily pricing in uh, the likelihood that the European Central Bank will lower the deposit rate um, by one tenth of one percent, so further into negative rates. Um, in relation to, uh, we have fourth quarter figures from the Gap. They're coming out um, on on Thursday. On Thursday, we also have fourth quarter numbers out from Slack Technologies. And finally, we have full year figures out from Cineworld. Now, keep in mind, Cineworld have had a pretty rough ride recently. Uh, there was kind of speculation uh, that the, the, the company um, could be hit um, if there's kind of a lockdown and people are uh, in relation to, to the coronavirus crisis. Basically, if people stop going to large public spaces, you know, you know a cinema theater is, is a prime example of an area um, 
which could be kind of the, the government could dissuade people from attending um, if this if this view is ramp up. So City World of Fulham numbers out. That's going to be important in the context of the kind of the health crisis situation here in the UK at the moment. Starting off uh, with the uh, big indices, I'll start off with the FTSE 100. So I'll give you, so today's session, we've fallen back to levels last seen uh, in the summer of 2016. So basically we're back to levels last seen when the UK uh, had its EU referendum vote. It's had a colossal move to the downside on the, uh, on the FTSE 100. If you continue to press and lower from here, we could be looking at targeting um, in around, we could be looking at targeting um, in around, um, we, have, we have back below 6,000, we could be looking heading towards 6,000, sorry, apologies, heading back towards potentially as low as the lows of uh, June 2016 in, ar in around um, 5,000, apologies there, in around 5,728. Uh, if we do have a, have a snap back and uh, you know if we can hold above the kind of 6,000 mark which we're currently just above if we can hold above that we could look at kind of retracing this gap here that was created overnight so we could look at heading north uh, up towards 6,260 to get the top end of this candle and then towards 6,300 <coughs> my apologies and if we go on higher from there we could then target this zone here potentially uh, just north of 6,400. But keep in mind, uh, we're talking about levels that are a few hundred points away from, from the current area. If we can, if we can hold above 6,000, that could be a sign that a bit of a, of a bottom is is, um, is, uh, is in formation. It is worth noting that the markets have been moving higher for the last couple of hours, but obviously it was the jolt to the downside which really did the damage. I'll take a look at what's going on over in Germany. Pretty brutal session over in Germany as well. We're back to levels last seen um, over a year ago. So we're talking about you know early 2019. So we're talking very much uh, a painful start. We can see here <coughs> by the by the shape of this candle that uh, the market has been pushing higher uh, throughout the uh, throughout the trading session. Um, cash trading has been going on for over two hours. So if we do kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at uh, retesting the kind of psychology board and eight sorry 11,000 mark. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking up to end towards again the top end of this candle um, at 11,096. And then if you go north of that, we could look to kind of fill this candle, fill the gap rather that was created between Friday's close and the uh, and Monday's open. Uh, so we could then head potentially head back up towards 11,421. On the downside, if the market then manages to turn over on itself and take out the recent lows, the lows of this session, it could take us back to this area here down around uh, 10,277. Uh, 10, I'll take a look now at the um, the CAC in France. Very similar scenario here. A brutal, uh, a brutal getting to the trading session. It gapped, uh, it gapped firmly lower. At one point, it fell down to levels last seen uh, in early 2019. So similar-ish to the DAX in that vein. There's been a steady increase in negative momentum. So as the market is driving lower, we can see a steady increase in negative momentum. So it seems that the control is in the hands of the of the bears for the time being. So if we do press and lower from here, because we're currently in around 4,778, if we press and lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here down around 4,555. If we do have a snapback, uh, we could look to you know retake um, 4,800 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting this area here in around where this line is here in at 4,897 and then if you go beyond that we, we could then be looking heading back up towards the psychologically important 5,000 mark and if you go beyond that we could be looking at heading back down towards where this gap was created in at 5,080. Now to give an indication of how bad things are US index futures are actually in limit down uh, and for those of you that don't know what that is, it's essentially a circuit breaker, breaker system that the futures exchange have in place. Essentially, if markets um, are, have a you know, move in one direction or the other, in this case down, um, in excess of 5%, the market just actually gets frozen and, and trading stops. It's a way of it's a way of just basically s slowing down uh, potential market going into kind of uh, either, either excessively rallying or in this case excessively falling. Um, there's there is talk uh, that, that the that the trading of uh, the likes of the Dow Jones, 
the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100, uh, the Russell 2000. Uh, the last I saw, there's a report going around saying that trading of those markets should reopen at 1330 GMT. But even if the markets do reopen at that time, there's nothing to say that they can't just trade for a minute or a second and then go back into limit down. Unfortunately, this is just this is this is just a symptom of when you have chaotic markets. Uh, the, 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 the bands of the the the, the, um, the bands of which the future exchange set in place to kind of stop markets spiraling out of control in one direction or the other they can be hit and then trading just, just gets frozen and unfortunately that's just that but it's, it's just it really it just highlights how uncertain and how volatile things are now we talked about the oil price at the beginning of, of the um of the update i'll take a look now at, at the um, brent crude oil we can see here that it's been already was in a fairly sizable decline throughout 2019. A colossal gap to the downside was created with a steady rise in negative momentum. Uh, Brent crude oil in the cash market is currently trading in around 35.80, 35 spot 80. So if you do like to kind of press on lower from here on the oil market, we could be looking heading heading back down towards the lows that we're seeing in 2016 in around 27 six, 27 and 13 any snapbacks uh in the oil market could potentially run into resistance in around the kind of 40 level big psychological number there and then if you go beyond that we could be looking at testing it towards the kind of the lows of friday in around or, or the close of friday in around 45 spot 49. Take a look at WTI. Similar situation here, whereby the market was been pressing lower throughout the month, basically throughout 2019, had a colossal gap to the downside um, when, when trading began between say between the, the close of play on Friday and the and, and futures market reopening uh, late on Sunday night. So if we do press and lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the lows of 2016. This zone here, down around 25 spot 73. And if you can snap back from here and, and claim some and claim some ground, we could be looking at retesting the highs. Well, to be honest, of this trading session in around 33 spot 62. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at you know keeping an eye for 40 bucks a barrel, probably the, the next big kind of psychological number. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading towards in around the kind of close of play on Friday, which is the summer in the region, just just south of 41 dollars a barrel, in around. 40 spot 17 uh 40 spot 97 there thereabouts seems to be the lows of the friday session i'll take a look at a few currency pairs now so we've had a major move to the downside all this fear and uncertainty in oil and stocks drove us um bond yields along with other government bond yields to record lows the, the massive move to the downside in u.s government bond yields has put colossal pressure on the u.s dollar hence why we're seeing a massive move to the upside in the euro versus the u.s dollar you know on euro dollar we're levels last seen uh in about in say there about uh, about one year ago so euro dollar is roughly at a one-year high there's a steady increase in positive momentum we're currently at 114 spot 31 if we can press on higher from here, we could really try getting this area here, the highs of early January or early to mid January 2019 in at one spot 15.70. Any uh, snapbacks? And let's face it, if you have a market that moves this higher, this aggressively, you're going to have a, a, a some bit of a correction or some bit of a snapback at some point. Not to say the market will completely turn over on itself, but it's difficult for markets to remain, maintain this level of momentum. So if we look to kind of pull back and have a bit of a snapback, we could see support come into play in this zone here in at one spot 12. Uh, and even if we pull, even if we move back below that, we could see support come from this red line here, the 2 moving average. Notice how on a few occasions, not too long ago, it acted nicely as support. So if that metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future. And that, and that metric, uh, the 2 moving average, comes into play in at one spot 10, um, sorry, one spot 11, 10. I'll take a look now what's going on on sterling dollar. Sim like I said, there's been dollar weakness across the board. So even though between mid-December 
and late February, there's a, broadly speaking, a move to the downside in sterling dollar. Now we're seeing a bit of a rebound. We seem to find a bit of a base in around here, in at um, one spot, 27, 26. This area here, which conveniently is just, just above the 20 moving average. We've been pressing higher from here. Uh, if we get back above the 132 mark, we could be looking at tar we, could, we could be looking at targeting this area here, the highs of late December in a one spot 3284. Um, if we do move, have a pullback, uh, we could find some support from this yellow line here, 100 day moving average. We could see that action as nicely as a, a support in the middle of February, um, and that comes into play in at what well just just shy of 130, one spot 2990. So 130 itself is a, is a big number, uh, and then of course one spot. Um, 29.90 is the water day moving average so that zone in around here might provide some support lastly i'll take a look at dollar yen just because um it's the, the massive collapse uh, massive sell-off in the u.s dollar there's been a major flight towards the japanese yen it's deemed it's perceived to be a safe haven currency so it's been a real double whammy for this currency pair we can see just about the the size of the move that witness over the night was just absolutely colossal. So dollar yen is clearly in a very strong downward trend. Uh, we're currently in at 102, spot 35. A break below 102 could take us back to um, back to this price here, uh, in at 109, spot 19. If we do have a snapback in um, in dollar in in dollar yen, we could be looking heading back up towards 104. Uh, or potentially even towards the height of this session in around 104, spot 62. And if you go beyond that, we could look to fill the gap um, in, in, in this area here from like the close of play or the lows uh, of Friday in around, uh, in around, well, close to 105, 104, spot 99. Now, I do, I do appreciate that this video went on a bit longer than, than normal, but obviously there was a lot of ground to cover. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please tune in next week. Have a good trading week and good luck.